Just trying to work out, can we actually get this? No, you watch the road. <laughs> Starting this video a little bit different. We're going on a road trip. Exciting stuff. <laughs> we need to shut this gate for the thumbnail. What you know what I mean? So we're behind or, bars. Or we could just go behind it. Or we could go, yeah, that's actually quite a good little shot. Am I on the right side? Um, uh, let me fix. No, you've got to swap. You've got to swap. Uh, yeah, I'm on the wrong side. Got to be done. Right, today we. Is it echoing? A little bit. Yeah, it doesn't matter. No. We're at Trop Aquaria. It, where is it? Minehead. We're saying Minehead. Yeah, Minehead. Minehead. Watch Easiest it. thing yeah. to do. Watch it. Um, there's some really, really cool stuff. Downstairs in this area, this is a tropical area. I'll take you around that in a minute. But downstairs, there's a massive sort of collection of all different tanks, different fish, um, different species of different fish. Is that the yeah. same as fish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Goodyids, yeah. Good, I don't even know what that means. That's, that's, yeah, type of live bearer, essentially, is the easiest life. way. But yeah, okay. Sean's got the biggest collection in the world now here. You'll meet Sean in a minute. Yeah. Uh, he's going to show us around all of his tanks. He looks after so many tanks and they look so good, really authentic. And some crazy fish as well. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that. <laughs> oh, if it flew down and just, just landed. Just talking about there's a bird up there that's just looking like it's going to attack. I could do it too, but I've got a zoom. Oh, that would be zoom. I can twist he it. He looks like he's going to. He I looks like he's. Uh, that doesn't do anything. Yeah, no, I could make it look like I'm doing. <laughs> this guy's like. He's got those eyes that look like he's going to hammer you. He does. He looks like he's angry, doesn't he? <laughs> We're in like an old radio tower, which is weird. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. But yeah, and then down the stairs is the whole, in the dark, is the whole section where all the fish are. Let's go down. Spooky down here. Oh look, here's Sean, the man himself. Morning. There's zero lighting at the moment. Hang on. There we go. Just blinded, that's all right. <laughs> so, Sean, I've just said to everyone, these are all your tanks that you're in charge of. Um, will you be able to take us around and have a little bit of chat around about each one? Yeah, no problem. Okay, cool. <laughs> right, this is a little bit weird. <laughs> this is a little bit weird, it's really bright, because obviously what they do down here is they make it completely dark so that the tanks really do stand out, but also the fish can't really see us. They can now, because I've just turned this bright light on that's blinding everyone. Um, yeah, I'll show you some of the tanks. African knifefish. African knifefish. This is your favourite, Matt, isn't it? One of them, yeah, definitely. There they are. Look, they can see me because they can see the light, so they're not <laughs> used to seeing that. They're like, what's going on? <laughs> really yeah, nice I'm setup. Always in a soft spot for, for knifefish. Really nice setup, this one, Sean. I love this. Red clown knifefish and black knifefish in the past. Yeah. Have you? Yeah, they got a bit too big, so they have to move on to other aquariums. So we're for a slightly smaller species. Although in saying that, this will get up to 30 centimetres. Yeah. So uh, they're a little bit more manageable, though, yeah. aren't they? And they're not as aggressive. No. You know, clown knives will eat anything in sight, whereas these guys are a little bit more chilled out. These are six. We've got six in here. And um, basically, they'll eat anything, although they do love chewy fix. Yeah. <laughs> lo look at the size of this Anubius. It's like four it times chunky. the size of my hand. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, we've had a problem with uh, growing the Nubius. It seems to like our water. And it likes the cave. It <laughs> it's a really nice tank, I love that. And I love this one as well. So these are um, the same as what we've got in the eight for African tank yes. um, at the shop. These yes. are the long finned Alestes. Ah, yes. And okay. we've also got in some. Um, Flying, Flying fox. fox. Yeah, yeah. But even this Anubius, look, it's like taking yeah, over the it, tank. It does. Um, They're great. We need to take it out of the tank and we went twice what your size, what you see. Yeah. It's What's it? Yeah, yeah. It spreads itself out. And these are. A type of crypt? Yeah, a type of crypt. Maybe a Sturiana? Yeah, I don't know what personal one it is. I got one plant. <laughs> Did you get it from Martin at the shop? It may have been. There's one Martin, plant yeah. in the corner, and this has happened over about four years. Yeah, it might be. Um, I'm not very up on my species of crypt, yeah. to be honest. Uh, but. It's actually grown even more since I put these guys in. Okay, yeah. Um, I did have um, garfish in there at one time. Maybe, maybe the extra waste, the extra food is, is yeah, contributing yeah. to a more like. Oh, it's quite garbage. interesting. Look at the yeah, you can see it all over here. Yeah, wow. Awesome. So that deep sand bed creating a really good nutrient-rich environment has caused the plants to go nuts. <laughs> awesome. Oh, we've got some rice fish above. Yes. I like that. All of these tanks, I love them. They're just—they're not complicated, but. They look so genuine. Yeah, proper little parts of the riverbed sort of thing, yeah. which is really nice. We can't do complicated, we don't have the time. <laughs> so we can't do O2 
those you know, CO2 systems, it's got to be put it in, leave it. CPDs here. They're, they're really chunky as well, those CPDs. I love a CPD. We've bred those in that tank. Oh, nice. Half those we see in there were bred in that tank. Again, I don't touch nothing. No. They'll just bring that tank. Every now and then I see little babies in the corners. To be fair, a mature system that's left alone and it's left to settle and everything just matures. I think that's the trick with everything is yeah. don't mess things up. Don't keep adding stuff to it, taking yeah. stuff away from it. Oh, well, that's completely opposite of what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Six but, months new tank. <laughs> yeah, but you can mess it about with like with different minerals and different treatments and different oh, well, I've got to mean. try and buffer yeah. this water up to this perfect pH of oh, gotcha. X. And, and yeah, I think it does just overcomplicate things. Yeah. Work with what you've got at the end of the day. If your pH suits one If something one works, size, don't change it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's this? I've never seen these kind of fish. <laughs> yeah, you've got to add the Nemo tank, haven't you? Yeah. And Dory. And Dory. And, Dory. Dory. Yeah. and the yellow one's bubbles. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, of course. You've got three bubbles, Sean. That's yes, the three bubbles. The three bubbles. Those bubbles have been here since before I came here. Oh, they're at least. 15 years old. Yeah, wow. At least. They look in great health though. Just their colour and their shape and everything. They yeah. look brilliant. The whole lot, the whole tank looks in great health, doesn't it? It's, it's so uh, cool though. This is the type of reef tank I like though. It's very muted and very sort of wild looking. Doesn't look like an alien spaceship. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just not my cup of tea to have all those colours. It looks like a bag of Harry Bow to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this just looks so natural and like a little rock pool sort of thing. Yeah, so you're saying that for you the fish should be the colour. Yeah, not so much, just yeah. colour everywhere. Yeah, that's it. I think if you've got all those big colourful corals over the rock, it just takes away from the impact of the fish. Yeah, yeah. Or the fact that we can't grow any fancy coloured <laughs> corals. Well, yeah. yeah. We, can only, we can only do soft corals. For some reason, I can't do any hard corals at all. It just doesn't work in a tank. I think you'd need a lot more time to be fair. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's, that's, that's soft corals, they work. Well, they look great. If and I was going to do it, that's what they, I would these do. These guys here, up there and there, I've all broken off from that. Oh, I see. And They've done their own off, thing. Done their own things. Moved around. Some mushrooms look great with those blue green stripes in them, though. I think they look really nice. There is actually a lot more going on than you first think when you look at this tank, isn't there? Yeah. I'm sure some, I'm sure some saltwater people watching this will be able to really appreciate it. I think it looks great. Really good job. The clean shrimp comes out every now and then. Yeah, I was going to say there's a cleaner shrimp and a lemon yeah. peel angel that I saw earlier. Um... The cleaner shrimp is huge. Yeah, he is. Uh, I just saw his poker's head out. <laughs> That's Jack, that is. <laughs> and then next to that, we've got a really, really cool tank, actually, silver, this one. Silver dollar tank. Silver dollar, is it? Yeah. Of, of some, yeah, some we, description. We thought they were one species, but they're a slightly different yeah, species. They, so they, they, when, as they've grown up, they've turned into something else. Got to try and track it, but there's so many different forms of them. And this is the right, one. See. This is the one tank where we've got no living plants. Well, that'll be because of your dollars. Because we're not. Oh, we see. <laughs> they so don't. they will eat any vegetation, then? Yes, yeah? pretty much. We, we've tried all sorts in there. We've tried lupus in there, and uh, they didn't take that part. Yeah. So yeah. it's the one tank we've got that is 100% uh, fake plants. Okay, what's in this one next? This we, call, this we call our x-ray tank. All right. Basically, they're all glass fish. <laughs> we just put some glass fish in. There yeah. it is, that's exactly the same species. That is, yeah, that's ones. the same species as what we've just done in the uh, puffer tank. Yeah, people have a tank. And there's the uh, glass catfish at the back, look, hiding. Oh, yes. little group of them in the Anubias there. They just look like ghosts. They're weird, aren't I they? can't even pick it up. The camera won't even focus. It's like it's not there. <laughs> there's not enough contrast. <laughs> Various species in here, and I still want to get my hump heads back again. Oh, look at that panda. I've got hump head glass fish. Yeah. Is that a panda go at the back? Panda go at the back. Yeah. That's yeah, you'll notice a lot of the tanks we've got um, our clean up crews, and I do like panda garrets yeah. as part of a clean up crew. They're yeah, very interesting um, looking. Like I say, they'll, they'll strip most rocks of algae. Sweet. And then this awesome little section here, look, like a like a window into a tank. It's so cool. So. What Sean's done is place the, the tanks lengthways. Um, Those tanks are two and a half foot long. Okay. Which is... 28 what? inches. 24 is two foot, so yeah. No, what's that? Centimeters. Centimeters. Four, uh, two and a half foot. 45, yeah. 30s. 30 it's funny because when you look down it, it doesn't seem no. like that. Let me turn this light off. Boom, there we go. Yeah, sweet. So what am I looking at? What fish is in this one? Oh, it's the rainbows. Yeah, yeah little, got... little rainbows. 
Are they like, Luminatus or Pascal or whatever it, says on it. whatever it says on the side in a minute? I can't remember what species they are. They're lovely though. Those bright, bright orange, beautiful. Yeah, it's the Luminatus that I've got them in my tank as well. Mm. My rare fish aquarium. Yes. Not as rare as the rare fish here. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> the rare fish in here are something else. What are these ones? Are they um, pygmies? Well, there's little pygmy corals in there, but you, you've also got uh, a lot of lampires in there. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, to, to the, the right the back. back. <laughs> or right at the back. You see the little eyes. I can't get them. I can't get them. They're in there though, for the sure. Norman's lampire. <laughs> Norman's. Well, is he having them back or? Yeah, at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then a tank the light. Actually, yeah, the giant African fan shrimp light. Oh yes. So you can see them sat in the flow. Just is she here? Is she coming? The flow's coming as well. Flow's yeah. on her way, yeah. Alongside Norman. Also in that tank there are still a pair of Daliorella um, translucida, which are this, about the fifth smallest fish in the world. Oh uh, yeah, I can see them. Yeah, oh, yeah. Good luck on picking them up. I've kind of got them. Yeah. But we had them breeding in the tank quite readily, but they got the group got quite old, so we found to left with the last two. Oh, that's amazing. Um, and that's adults? Yeah. Wow. That's adults. Um, <laughs> uh, Bristol Museum, top Bristol, um, sorry, um, Bolton, Bolton Museum. Yeah. Um, they've, got, they've got a little aquarium there, um, which is extremely good. Um, they breed them quite regularly. Well, this is an interesting tank. Now, recently, because of Minecraft, <laughs> axolotls <laughs> become very famous. Yeah, there, there are two things when kids come down into the aquarium. You'll hear, do you have axolotls? <laughs> and then the litters will say, Nemo. <laughs> um, we've got a uh, picture of axolotls as they come in the um, entrance. And they, and they want to see the them. Wall. And as soon as they see them, the kids get really excited that we've got axolotls. Turn this light off because it'll be too bright for their little eyes. Yeah, we found that using blue light <laughs> on these makes them less skittish. Right. If I put a, a bright light or a natural light on here, they'll hide in the back. Yeah. You won't yeah. never see them. Um, but with a blue light. This goes hilarious. Look at this lips. <laughs> They're so great. About four times the size of my one that I used to have. These are vampire crabs in this one, yeah? Yeah, I can see one. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, it's just come out of the water. What was it? I can't remember. They had like, there's been the entrance of them in there. They were breathing. Oh, it's they... funny. I'm tempted to do a vampire crab tank. I'm really, like, really quite liking them. So they just need a little pool of water, yeah? A little pool of water, um, plenty of, uh, sort of foliage, and then you feed them anything that grows. <laughs> uh, you know, um, leaf, um, salad. Um, fruit, vegetables. Wow. Just chop up and find bits. <laughs> so they're just scavengers in the wild. Scavengers. Anything that yeah. drops to the yeah. the forest. Is uh, it a forest? Or I suppose marsh. It's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 like, it's like a forest. It, it looks foresty. Let's be yeah. honest. Like. And then what, what we try and do is when they shed their mm -hmm. shells, we try and leave them in. Yes. Because they'll put them out because it's calcium. Yeah, yeah. yeah so what we'll do, we'll move the shells wherever they drop them and move them to the backs of them. So, so they can eat them. So people don't see them. Yeah, people think they're so, so, so you've got a dead, dead, dead crab. Yeah. And so you put them to the back. So, um, but they, they will um, use it as a source of calcium. That's amazing. <laughs> Such cool little guys. Oh, the next one. This now we come on to our, the, Wow. This is the Goodyear section. Yeah, so this is this is the start of Sean's collection. <laughs> okay, so people don't know what is a Goodyear. Goodyear is a live bearer from Mexico. Okay. Um, they are one of the rarest species of fish, or genus of fish um, in the world. There's about, we believe there's 40 um, known species, of which two are possibly now extinct. Wow. Uh, the rest, are, the vast majority, are either critically endangered um, or extinct. Okay. They stick to the wild. So um, this whole section is dedicated to just, well, the show ones of what you've been breeding that's it, around yeah. the back. We, we breed, I think it's 32 species of the known 38. Wow, that's a good effort. Yeah. Not many more to collect, I'm sure. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, Sean thinks they're we Pokemon. Do have some that the only <laughs> ones... catch you them all? <laughs> we do have some that the only ones in Europe. Wow, okay. Which I'll show you later. Yeah. Um, Wicked. These actually, these are actually my favourite. They remind me of a little mackerel. They did it with those spots, like yeah, sort of semi spots. This, this, this oh, yeah. the diamonds. On them, so it's so cool. one of the reasons why I did them this tank. This tank and, looks fantastic. And they've, as well. got, and they've also got some um, green sword tails. Oh, uh, yeah, wild tails. Some, some of us had a rifle. Nice. In there as well. Yeah, so you've got the female sword tail there. And there. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there's a few males. Yeah, yeah, dying about. That's like nice. That yeah, Anubius, though, look. It's beauty, yeah, isn't it? Grows like anything. But just look, there's not even any green spot on the. No. I, I think it, you've be nailed them. And, the and the lighting level, yeah. I think, is just right. Like. The it's fish will be eating a lot of that algae though, because they do like a little bit of a nibble on the algae, don't they? 
I love the natural look of these tanks, I really do. No fancy substrate or anything like that. It's just it's just gravel and then all the different plants and stuff gravel intertwining. Yeah, I've got, <laughs> I know I, I quite often use gravel for my dad's driveway. <laughs> but I use that to bulk it up. You've yes. just gone straight in, that no, will work. That's, that's, that's like a proper riverbed though, I yeah. love it. Yeah. That's a gravel from your local um, builders merchants. As long as you clean it. Yeah, I'll be Sean. Awesome. I will be cutting this out because we're going to sell. I'm here on the day off, so it's fine. It doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> Not in maiden their time now. We've made that evidently clear. God, this one's gorgeous. Yeah, this some, one um, is gorgeous. Um, Dracolons in here, which are uh, a species of um, goodyards hiding at the back. They're hiding, are they? Um, but even even just as a like, I can appreciate just how I don't know. I think it's awesome. What is that? That is. That is dwarf size, isn't it? Looks like it, yeah. Yeah. It does look like it. It is dwarf size, it's just the low lighting, well, the block lighting is making the grow extra tall, that's yeah. all. Yeah, it ends up looking like barrel. Yeah. That's yeah nice. Again, I strip it out and move into other tanks. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like your, your plant grow out that you can then I've distribute got, I've got everywhere else. tanks which do really grow well and then we use them. Yeah, I do grow similar out. actually, I've got to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can do that. Okay, next up we've got this beast of a tank. Sean, what size is this? Uh, eight foot by two foot by two foot. Crikey. Uh, 900 litres. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and what's interesting, those are mangroves, aren't they, they are in the mangroves. back? They are live mangroves. Um, this used to be a brackish tank at one time. Um, it's now been changed to a freshwater tank, but I've decided to keep the mangroves in. And it's, it's completely fresh water. Completely fresh water. We'll go around the back of it to show you, yeah. but they're just growing nuts as well yeah, above the water. You, you don't need to have salt water or brackish water to grow mangroves. Um, wow. Especially red mangroves. These are red mangroves. Right. And red, red mangroves seem to be able to grow in practically anything. And what fish? Um, these are Zugana te te tequila. The tequila oh, yeah. Slip thing. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> these, these are the guys, obviously, that are extinct in the wild up till last year yeah. when they got reintroduced uh, in a place called um, Tishlin in uh, Mexico uh, basically returned into a swimming pool because in Mexico a lot of the uh, river areas are also used as swimming holes okay so rivers will flow into concrete swimming pools and flow back out the other side <laughs> really? So, How funny yeah uh, but it's also good because if they're swimming in it they look after it yeah of course so it's actually the perfect perfect habitat for it I so see. we breed a lot of these um these are some of the adults <laughs> evidently yeah yeah so um, many there the males do get very very black and then you get either an orange yeah um, rim or something to yellow oh, okay um we seem to be predominantly orange in this in this lot nice and we also so we also advertise um the local um people who are doing all the work. Um, there's um, a group called the River Guardians, and just a wish a group of um, local people, school children, that go around and basically clean up rivers. Um, nice. So they're, they're, they're looking the after it as yes. well. That's yeah. brilliant. So we like to sort of publicise the work that they're doing. Yeah, because um, ultimately without them you've got nowhere to reintroduce them. That's it. And eventually they will just that's wither it. away, won't they? That's amazing. Yeah, really good. What's this section here then? All right. lit up. This is our breeding conservation room. We wanted something that the public can see what we do off show. Right. So this is just a tiny snapshot. This is just eight tanks, sorry, seven tanks of what we do off show. Okay. We've also got another hundred tanks off show, but I couldn't show them yeah. all that. So we built this last year um, with the help of Magnet Aquatics uh, plus some other sponsors. Um, and it's basically just show, showcasing all of the... Um... Yeah, it's a showcase of um, various species of um, the Goodyeards that we breed on site. Oh, and a figure of eight. So this tank here is Mud Skippers. It's yeah. a brackish Mud Skipper tank. Brackish Mud Skipper, oh my just goodness. There. He's great. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> and we've also got like... some figure eight puffer fish in there and some the... black mollies. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. There's, there's the... Oh, um... Oh, 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 get the close. There we go. There's the figure eight puffer fish. There's the black molly. Black mollies are awesome. They're so I, cool. I really do like black mollies. Yeah. And this one's got like the big top fin as well. Yeah, so they're more of a, like a sail, well, not proper sail fin molly. That's a bit of a half and half. So there's a few species of molly, isn't there? Like, I get lost in them. 
that it's that more. figure eight puffer fish. So did a puffer stay in the dark more then? Is that uh, a usual? Is it just because we've come tearing it, up it, the yeah. tank? <laughs> yeah. it's, it, they are a bit skittish. Uh, I'll just put a little bit of food in there. I hope to bring them, bring them out. Um, he's, he's starting to. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Must keep hiding underneath. He's come up I to see me. I can't decide which look more weird, axolotls or mudskippers. Yeah, they're both equally as, as weird, aren't they? Yeah. Her? <laughs> oh, he's gone. That's a really cool setup, though. I like that. So it's just basically a floating sort of island. Well, not floating, it's placed upon some, some uh, tanks that Sean's put at the back, three of them. Perspex on the top, he said, and then you're just creating this sort of natural look of sand on the top. Ready for these guys to go on? They're great as they hop up the water, aren't they? <laughs> He's not that shy, is he? No, not at all. <laughs> so is that a trio of them in there then? No, there's, there's a pair. Cool. So, the one there, oh, yeah. One the oh, yeah. Right, the next tank, Lake Malawi. Full of Malawi cichlids, probably about a dozen or so species. It yeah. looks wicked. I absolutely love it. I think this looks great. Look, the plants you've got in here, Sean. Look at, <laughs> yeah. look at the mass of yeah, Anubias. Yeah, like, like we use this as a, well, anything I've got spare plants on, I put in here. Um, if I'm clearing any duckweed off any tanks, which is the bane of my life. <laughs> yeah. I, Tell me about it. I put it in here because the Malawis will absolutely destroy it. Yeah. So I use it as a, a food source as well for them. That's great, isn't it? That's good though, natural food source. It is, yeah. And very easy to um, propagate. So uh, yeah. Hair algae, when I take out hair algae, they'll <laughs> yeah. eat hair algae. Nice. So I'll try not to throw anything away if I know they're going to eat it. Is this 10 foot? 8 foot. 8 foot. It's a deeper tank though, isn't it? It's yeah. actually 1800 litres. Oh wow, okay, that's, that's really big. big. Yeah. That's wicked, I love it. That works so really that's well. It's about 2.5, but 26 inches high. And it's like about 13 inches uh, deep somewhere. So you can have a planted Malawi tank. Yeah. <laughs> it's just making sure they're fed and making sure that, you know, it's a size though, isn't it, at the end of the day. It's very similar to what we say. You can't mix neons and angelfish in a tiny little tank together. But if you have them in an eight foot, yeah. you'd be able to have for 500 neons and a dozen angelfish in there and it would work. And again, if you look in the corners, you'll see baby. Yeah, there is. Baby Malawi is kicking about. Everywhere. Different sizes. Yeah, yeah. Complete, completely varied. Yeah, age we, we, we haven't added, added any fish to this tank for about eight, nine years. <laughs> Crikey. Well, that's a perfect display, isn't it? <laughs> the, the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. And for some reason, they all seem to breathe true as well. We're not getting many hybrids. Awesome. Which is very, very pleasing. Yeah, we're lucky, isn't it? Yeah. Looks great. The mixture. And with the, yeah, I'm really impressed. Love it. Next one. Oh, the Burmese Rummy, Rummy Nose. Ah, oh, they're so cool. Um, the males and females are different. Yes. Yeah, because the females are like almost like a yellowy sort That's of tan colour, aren't they? And the males get that almost like shiny tin foil. Where the females are hiding. Yeah, the I, don't, I did just see some females darting yeah. behind the Anubias. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah, they look, look like completely different species when you see them. Yeah. The so and these are all males at the back on the front, yeah. yeah? Yeah, they are all the boys. But it's crit, look at this crit. Looks great. It does, doesn't it? The whole thing, I just think it looks so natural. The little bits of, uh, you know, algae that's in between it and, it and the way it's starting to creep as well. It Love just, it. It just makes everything look like a river there. And then it gives food for everything, you know. Yeah. Where, you know, I'm sure the algae helps a lot with babies and everything like that. Yeah, if anything you're afraid, any, any algae you've got in there, where they can hide. Yeah. Brilliant. Whoa, and then right next to it. Yeah. <laughs> this is my, my Rasbora tank. Rasbora tank. I need to step back to get it all in. Rasbora slash Valis. Yeah. <laughs> my, my Val tank. There's about half a dozen different species of Rasboras. I didn't there. know Val worked here. I know, it's, um, you've got Crypt Balance as well in there. Yeah, That's well, amazing. It's, it's in little bulbs. Yeah. It? yeah. And that one didn't grow for ages, and then in the last year it's just. Gone. So we've got our traditional. Harlequins. Yeah. You can see some algae eaters as well. And you've got some um, axle rods as well, the little yeah. blue ones at the far end there. Just to show yeah, them yeah. I've got some of those, remember that? Yeah, they're lovely little fish. And there's a lot of various shrimps and things in there as well. Uh, Amano shrimps and ordinary cherry shrimps. Nice amount of cover for them in there, isn't yeah. it? Oh, that's good. Again, simple design here, guys, look. And for those of you that are still following aquascaping, <laughs> just Sean's put a nice, chunky, big bit of driftwood a nice clear open area and then the plants sort of looping over the top, tall plants and it works so well, love it.
I love your skaters, Sean, I have to say. It didn't start off like that, believe me. It <laughs> with a bit of valleys in the corner, yeah. a couple of plants, some swords and one end which got pulled out, and then basically you, you stay with what grows. But the thing is, you've got so much to do that I expect you turn your back, you come back, and yeah. something's full of plants. You know? That's it, yeah. That's a bit like me, I've, that's why I, I'm like, oh, I, I find it so hard to keep up with the trimming of my moss. And people are like, well, moss grows slow. It's like, well, yeah, but when you've got 50 tanks doing it, it, it just, just gets crazy. Yeah, but I don't physically have the time to do anything high tech. It has to be plants in. It doesn't need to be, though. Yeah, that... High tech doesn't look real to me, personally. I don't think it does, but that's just my personal taste. Next tank. We've got some sparkling garamis in there. Sparkling somewhere. garamis somewhere. Yes. Matt, if you see them, point them out. Yeah, well, elusive. Aquarium, aquarium challenge. You're normally good at spotting stuff. It's the sparkling garami, for anyone watching, the sparkling garami is amazing. He is a real chunk. <laughs> yeah, he's just in that panel there. If you oh, yes. Do you see it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's, there's about, um, about a dozen. Yeah, he's a chunky lad. I got about him. About six pairs. Right, it's out of the screen. He's staying perfectly still. <laughs> Again, a nice tank, it's full of plants, looks good. Moving along next to them is dwarf neon rainbow fish and a massive Anubius again. <laughs> <laughs> Love your Anubius. That male, that male in the middle is. Yeah, massive. And the females, yeah. And that, so look at all the grass in the back. You can't even see the back of the tank. <laughs> Let me zoom out. And that's been thinned out. That's it. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. It yeah, looks so great, good. It? It looks and so it, good. As you can see, it's growing again at the front. Yeah, shooting out. Sure. Yeah. See, now I always get worried that I've overplanted my tanks and stuff, but this is this is like wild for them, isn't it? You know, they would be living in areas like this. Yeah. Maybe um, not Anubius, but you know. I mean, if there's any predators about, they're going to be hiding in any dense foliage they can find. Yeah, so yeah definitely. They, they feel. Absolutely. Yeah, the dense foliage also makes the fish come out a lot more. Yeah. It makes, you know, if they've Definitely. got somewhere that they can dart to That's quickly. 100%. It makes them so much more confident in themselves. Love it. Right, then next to this tank. I need to stop <laughs> saying. This is our Lake Bromby tank. Um, lake Bromby is a crater lake, crater lake in the Cameroons. Okay. Um, and basically, the reason these fish Whoa. are critically endangered is because. The lake could disappear at any time. Right, if I see. In a volcanic crater lake, oh, if wow. there's a volcanic explosion, they'll be gone. They'll be gone because it will you know, destroy the lake. Yeah, yeah. Right. And a nearby lake that actually happened um, where there was there was a um, sort of like a, massive. a volcanic eruption. And not only did all the fish die in the lake, but so did the villagers that lived oh, near that as well because of the, the gas that came across. I see. So it's not because they are. Um, rare in numbers, it's because the environment. The environment is they're very. On, yeah, they're living on a knife edge. They're living on borrowed time because yeah. it, will, it will erupt the area in, uh, at some time. Just want to show everyone something. This is not a rock. That's <laughs> our giraffe catfish. Well, Matt, go it's, next to it so yeah, I can show the size. It's been like, here since we've. <laughs> since we took over. Crikey! He doesn't, do, he doesn't do anything all day until we put food in. Okay. And then he explodes. Does he? And pushes everyone else about. I mean, I'm guessing he wasn't that size when you put him in here. Uh, no, it was. It was that similar size. But we never put him in here. Um, oh, I see. It's before our time. Yeah, because I don't um, expect you would put a fish like that in here now. No. But seeing as it's his no. home, the, the, or the her home. The problem is, um, we would have liked to have moved him, but we've taken advice from other zoos and he, he moving him to another place, the chance are he would survive. Yeah, he yeah. best. Well, he seems happy, let's just yeah. keep it as he is. That's it. Or her. Uh, is it a male or female? There's no way of knowing. No way of I've not checked. No. <laughs> not asked. <laughs> yeah, don't and get... Again, that tank, again, is bigger than what you actually think. Yes, definitely. Um, it no. looks deep for my eye, which means it's very deep. Yeah. 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 Again, that's 1,800. That's nearly two tonnes of water. In Crikey. The <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot of water. And you've got some large dissipatetras in there. Yeah, I mean, um, colouring is great. And the, the thing is there, we don't know how old they are because they were almost that size when we first got them. Yeah. Oh, wow. So they were all inherited yeah, when you took over the zoo. They've gone way past their known age. Yeah. And when I mean way past, I mean like about five or six years past. Oh, crikey. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Bless them. <laughs> they're, Amazing. They're living on borrowed time as well. Uh, yeah. But again, they seem to be extremely happy. Yeah. Extremely healthy. Crazy. 
<laughs> okay, all these are all, all these cichlids, all mouth brooders. Oh, really? And again, they again they breed in the tank. I mean, all, all yeah, you can ones. see the different sizes, can't yeah. you? Everywhere, different, completely different see sizes. See any with any holding any eggs? Awesome. This guy's funny. <laughs> Looking good. So then, next to that giant tank, we have got the Lake Tanganyika section. Yeah, we've got we? six smaller tanks, Lake Tanganyikans. Sweet. Um, we might as well start with this one up here. Shell dwellers. Yeah. Yeah, these are great. You can see all the babies, so it's really hard to yeah, point. This is um, on artists. There we go. Oh yeah. I was like, what are you pointing at, Matt? That's just uh... that little tiddly baby, yeah, and then yeah, you've got a, this couple coming up to the front. Look, these are like teenagers. We think there's about four different broods, size-wise, in there. And then you've got an adult female at the back as couldn't, well. Couldn't breed these for about three years since we've had them, and then in the last few months they've gone nuts. Really, it's taken yeah. that long to get it's that long. And I think it may have been because I also had a Tanganyikan. Um, Catfish. Uh, okay, uh, yeah. Which might be no. As Stop soon as I it. saw the fry, I took it out. Yeah, yeah. And now they seem to be. So it's crushed bright. coral. Crushed coral. The pH up. Um, they're scargo shells because they're nice and cheap. Yeah. Yeah, and they're good size as well. Yeah. I'll have to search some of them out because they are great. Any catering website? Is it? Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll be on that. I've got a whole tub of them. Have you? Yeah, for oh. my tank. We need to do another tank and even tank. <laughs> okay, this top yeah. one. Wow. Look. At that, Amazon sword, and look at the pinkness of those leaves coming through, all being grown, which was, we've discussed this before, in crushed coral. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> and that's yeah, because these, the water comes in at like quite low pH, doesn't it? Yeah, but um, these um, tanks are very mature in that they are probably about eight or nine years since they were set up. Right. We okay. might change the fish inside, we might change a few plants, yeah. but I very rarely, if ever, change the um, substrate. substrate. Yeah, it's just like me, really. I, substrate yeah, stays. My, just like my tanks, they're basically set up for eight years. And yeah, this is it. Yeah, you don't ever change them. Don't ever change them. And obviously, oh, very sick. It's, it's the very sick. Look at the babies. Yeah, so these so are. They really don't cool. predate on their own babies, though. No, no they actually protect um, their babies. The, the older brothers and sisters will actually. Defend. That's amazing. Um, the babies. That's yeah, so it builds good. up like a family group essentially. So yeah, because you know, yeah. they obviously know there's safety in, in their numbers, That's so it. it makes sense to protect their young. It'd be amazing to see these in the wild. I wonder how big a group you get to. Do you ever, yeah. you know, do you ever get them in their hundreds, or is it always small family groups? Or is it thousands? Maybe yeah. just a whole group of them. Yeah, that's cool. They're, they're up and they're using this Amazon sword a bit like a clownfish would use an anemone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> yeah, they look great. It looks awesome. Then below them, we've got some sardines. Uh, yeah, Cipropromis. Yeah. Oh yeah, these are the ones that um, you were going to get in for me, but I broke the tank down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Again, I've struck this ta tank down quite bare. I'm having problems with the, oh, well, the hair algae. The hair yeah. algae's cool. I like it. I think I'm really starting to like algae. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it does. It adds such a natural element, and yeah. so many animals feed off of it in the wild. It it's does real. make that ecosystem. Yeah. So the only thing I don't like is using coral rock. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I, I need to go back to um, more naturalistic. Yeah, big cobbles and pebbles yeah, and yeah, things I agree. like that. Yeah, I, I agree. agree. Which I is agree. what we're going to be doing over the winter. Do you mean like this here? Yeah. 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 I agree. I don't really like it. that kind. Of, it makes it look artificial. The lava stone looks all right though. Stone yeah, stone definitely. The lava stone works really well. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And and I love the the algae in that on there. Like it's just it looks aged. It looks real. Absolutely love it. I it's love like you're looking guys. into the bottom of a river. That's the cool thing, or a lake in these yeah. guys' cases. But it does it proper natural. Yeah, when, when, when a tank looks alright, I try not to touch it at all. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's what you've got to do. But then the next one along, <laughs> Julie Decrobus. Yeah, yeah well done. Yes. Oh, look at that Latin oh, name right there. Yes, but you, you are. You, I'm learning from you. I was, I was impressed with that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Which one? Uh, uh, which one? Which species? Oh. Julie I. <laughs> Julie De <laughs> um, I know, I didn't know that. That's yeah. it. That's all I've got. That's it. Well, that's close enough. We'll let you off. Now, these guys are cool as well. And you've gone for. Is this the coral rock again? It is, but yeah. we'll, we'll be changing this over the winter. We're yeah, gonna, I agree with you. Gonna, gonna it doesn't look too bad when it's got the green on it, does it? It looks, yeah. it looks good, but yeah, when, when you've got when that dark, dark yeah, white. Yeah, when it darkens up, it's not too bad. But yeah. again, I want to change this. I still think the bouldery rocks look yeah. Yeah. much yeah. more like what you would actually see well. If, as well. if you look at the pictures of them in, in the natural habitat, yeah. it, as you can see from the, here on the side. Yeah, oh, that's a great little... Yeah. That's what Big I want to Big rounded boulders. 
I will keep the substrate, but I will put a thin layer of sand yeah. over the top just to try and just to change it. And then below we've got some more shellies. Yeah, these are the, uh, the Maltese. Oh yes. Brilliant. And I've just, I think I just saw, yeah, you've got some cherry shrimp in there as well. Yeah, I use cherry shrimp in there to help um, control the, the air algae. Otherwise it does get a bit... Uh, I'm guessing these guys breed in regularly, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah all Good. the shelter others do. Once I get going. Yeah. Okay, then the next tank is... Um, is this finally. a big cube, is it? Um, yeah, not far off it. Not far off it. It's, it's almost a square. And the it's, fish it's are... About, um, 800 litres. Uh, is, this the, is this the fish? This is the, the golden skiffier. Yeah, I love these. This is my and first time seeing them. Um, sign is showing what the local uh, people in Mexico are doing to help protect the river. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so it's like full education yeah, in this one. Yeah, that's it. But I, I love these. This is my first time seeing them. There we go. That's a really good one. Right in that middle bit. And again, you'll see fry here in corners and, and that. Can we have some at some point? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, not on these. <laughs> oh. um, the only way that you would get any of these is becoming members of the British Library Association. Well, that's what we're doing then. Or the Goodyear Working Group. <laughs> how, what's the donation? I'll do it now. Um, I, don't know, I don't know how much it is to, to join them up. <laughs> we'll be there at the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I just want these ones. <laughs> They're so beautiful, aren't they? I reckon it's a can of worms though. When you start with one thing like this... You end up with 150 tanks or something. Yeah. <laughs> Before I came here, um, I've never kept a fish tank in my entire life. <laughs> how long ago was that? About 10 years. Okay, so yeah, it's, you are pro now though, I suppose. Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't say pro, I still can't tell you one, one end of the fish to the other. But. <laughs> <laughs> You're pro, stop being modest. Step back a bit, Matt. Look at that, that's, so that's one row we've done, and it, and it goes all the way down the back. There's a lot of tanks there's here. three rows of this. It's, it's a U-shaped underground. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, but now we get to see the back rooms, can't we? Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> so this is secret entrance number one. We have two sections. <laughs> my, my camera isn't wide enough. <laughs> Matt, you might need to do the uh, B-roll on this section oh, because wow. <laughs> I'm struggling. Hang on, my video from back outside. <laughs> I've just shown there's just tanks upon tanks. Tank, tank, tank. And these are all the breeding programs, aren't they, Sean? Yeah, all the breeding programs. All, each tank's got one species and one location. Okay. Uh, and we actually keep the fish not only by species, but by the location they were originally um, collected from or discovered. Ideal. The so reason that's... being is, um, in case the genetic work comes back, that they could be two separate species. Yeah, yeah just to um, make sure. Uh, in the last few years, um, one species, Xenotoga um was discovered to actually be three species. And if we mix the fish all together, you'd lost the. You'd lost the whole lot. Wow! Yes. Of so course. we we keep everything by individual location. Which so is probably what's happened with like bristle noses over the years right. and things like that, and, and angelfish as well. Bristle noses to know that they are definitely not the same species. Yeah, there's there's so hundreds. There's hundreds of different species. Yeah, this is it. That's amazing, though, isn't it? With all these different names and all the different area locations, yeah. that's hard work keeping that all up, though, isn't it? Like. Once it's set up, it's not too bad. I suppose. Yeah, that's it, yeah. isn't it? So I'm guessing it's an auto water change system, yeah? No. No? No. It is... My goodness. I'll show you what it is. Every single one is individual. <laughs> oh, no, sure. That into a bucket. And then a bucket goes into um, the wheelie bin at the end. I'll bring that up there. And then you have to because pump it up. Because we're actually below drain level. The drain level is actually there. So everything's pumped so up and out. So I have to out. pump up and out. So we have got a pipe that goes out <laughs> to the drain. Well, if you're wondering what this lot is, this is the other side of the display. So that goes, obviously, all the way back as well. Crikey, you've got your work cut out, haven't yeah. you, Sean? So, every single tank... Do you get employee of the month every month for? <laughs> <laughs> like I say, every single tank you see is siphoned manually. Crikey. It is siphoned out straight into the bucket, and then the bucket's got a sump pump in, and the sump pump pumps I'll, it I'll never complain about having to do a water, a water change once every two months ever again. <laughs> <laughs> cool. About two to three thousand litres of water a week. Really? Water change. It's 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 it's, it's straightforward in that it's just siphoning it into. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It all takes time, doesn't it? But this is yeah. just one room. This is just one rack. Let's go to the next one. No. Right. This is the other room. Stop. Holy. This, That's this the is the <laughs> Okay. This is your base of operations yeah, mainly, yeah, then, yeah, is yeah, it? Yeah. This is it. My desk is in here. So. <laughs> my desk is in. Oh my goodness, it's just tank upon tank. Yeah. 
Again, it's a bit, a bit messy because the water changed really yesterday. And I've put everything away. But again, we've got another bunch of tanks. Right, yeah. um, All different species of fish. Yeah, and these are all like the kind of uh, the Mexican ones. All Mexican line yeah. yeah. Okay. So we've got a few other things. Um, I've got some platters. I've got some other live bearers. What is it? A sword tail. A few bits and pieces. Because people are probably going to be thinking, well, why don't I go and zoom in on every single tank? Well, because most of them look very similar. But the point is that you're trying to keep certain parts or se separate, just in case. Yeah, basically, we keep all the species separate. We yeah. don't mix any species and you'll also notice we don't have anything that's got the same genus next to each other so in case a fish jumps from one tank to another oh, I see oh crikey yeah. and again I can't take the tanks below I'll make sure they're different genus yeah. as well again so they don't jump into that's, a, that's below. quite a, like a conundrum really isn't it yeah. it's like playing chess with fish it's, it, yeah, it's <laughs> like Tetris <laughs> yes can, indeed can I move that across to, to there fish was, Tetris <laughs> yeah. yeah and this is all obviously this is all like charity you're a charity essentially Sean aren't you well you, or are you we, different now we do rely 100% on donations yes you know, we get no grants from no. anybody. Everything you see has been. Do a from website money. for donations. Um, if you look on our website, Tropicaria. We'll find it out. I'll put it below yeah. the video just yeah. in case we, people we, we've wanted got to donate. We've got a donation link. Yeah, that would be really um, cool. Yeah, people, yeah lots of people no. will be watching this week in amazing work, and they'll probably want to donate. So yeah, we'll leave a link below. Yeah, well, to, to, if you want to sponsor the Goodyear Working Group, try the Goodyear Breeding Project, um, fifty pound a year, and you get some free tickets to come and visit us oh, as sweet. well. Um, it's well worth a visit. Yeah, yeah. definitely. We haven't even gone outside to any outside. of the animals, we've no. just done fish. Yeah, this is going to be an hour long with just fish, <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. It's so good. Okay. Again, all the tanks, we've got a mixture of different plants. Like. Say that again. <laughs> now I press record. On, on film. Um, Alodontic, it's, uh, Alodontic, these hubsy, or yeah. white patch stripling. Um, these guys, these are the last four in Europe. Um, oh, they are still in, in the wild, although extremely endangered. Um, we are trying to get these guys breeding. I've uh, got uh, one large female. You'll notice they sink straight to the bottom. Yeah, I just saw that. That's because they've got a very, very small swim bladder. Because so they have to they, work against that constantly. Because they're working in, they, they come from um, streams with um, large flow. Oh, she does. Uh, so yeah, wow. you look at them, you think um, there's something wrong with them. Almost. Almost. No, they do oh. have a very small swim bladder. That's amazing. So, so they can just sink and not get sink. just pushed That's away. It. So almost like a goby getting on that sort of line of things, really. That's amazing. Um, so we're hoping that these get bringing the females looking a little bit bigger. They literally like they're swimming up so hard because they're like a stone, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> we've got a treatment for that, Sean. We've got a swim bladder treatment at the shop. <laughs> So we'll fix that. We'll fix that. <laughs> That's great. So we're back outside in the whole tropical area because Sean just wanted to show me this amazing pond they've got over here. What can you tell me about it then, Sean? Other than the fact that it's awesome. But it's basically, it's a pond that's got the golden skiffy and tequila split things in. That's got your favourite fish um, in it. From the Cridgets. Uh, cool. So a bit of publicity about the River Guardians who help keep the river um, tussling. So this is like supposed to supposed to be like a snapshot yeah. of their natural environment. Um, when you just walk around like this, look, you you can't see. Oh, what's this? You stand still for a second, and they are everywhere, aren't they? It's so cool. So that is the tour of all the fish. There's actually so much more here to look at, but we've already gone this long into the video. <laughs> yeah. so, so if you want to see us do everything else as well that's kind of not fish related, then just let us know below because um, we don't just want to stick that on the end of this for no reason at all. So yeah, let us know and we will see you soon. Yeah, sounds good. I think you've covered all the bases, yeah. We've got some stuff planned as well that I can't tell you about at the moment, so I don't even know why I said that. Literally didn't realise these guys were here the whole time. Yes, we're coming back. <laughs> Go one prong that way. There, but face more in. I remember when he words at the top. Oh yeah, down a bit. 